I want to see the best players and coaches get a chance at the XFL HBCU Showcase. Prairie View is the new team to beat in SWAC women's track and field, and Virginia State has found the new head football coach. Oh, yeah, it's locked on HBCU. Play my music. You are locked on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU Podcast, your number one daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day every day. And I want to see the best players and coaches get a chance at the XFL HBCU showcase. And last week, the XFL announced that they're going to have showcases during the months of June and July. And two of the more unique showcases are one in Hawaii and the other one at Jackson State, obviously in Jackson, Mississippi. And the reason that they wanted to do these showcases in this in these two particular locations is diversity and inclusion. And both are intended for this. This was something that the XFL spoke up on. And I want to talk about this because, number one, Hawaii, I feel like there's just not a good amount of Hawaiian football players that you see on a national land uh, or national view. But then also HBCUs. And that's what we're here to talk about. I did want to just briefly mention that. Um, But also I want to talk about these HBCUs because that's what we're here to do, right? Like, we are here to talk about HBCU athletics, so let's get into it. I think that there are a couple of things that work in favor of HBCU athletes and then also the XFL. And number one is let's look at the timing of it all. Let's look at the timing of everything, June and July. Now, with it being in June and July, the season's going to start in 2023, February of of that year. But in June and July of 2022, you're going to have HBCU athletes who did not make the cut as far as training camp. Some of these camp invites are not going to make it. Look, that's just the fact of the matter. Some of them are not going to make it. And those who do not make it now have a chance to get there at the XFL. I think that this is really perfect timing because if you do it too close to mini camp, you're not sure who's going to come in around June or July. There's still going to be a couple of people who you didn't expect. But then also, you're going to kind of understand you have a bigger pool to select from. And this showcase isn't a selection um, showcase. It's more so a it's a conclave that's meant to get talent together to decide who we're going to put into the draft. That's more so of what it is as opposed to just a tryout. It's a tryout for the draft, essentially. And then another thing that they have working for them is it's at Jackson State and with the this one is kind of mutually beneficial in the sense that Jackson State is one of the higher profile football, probably the highest profile in HBCU football right now. So you're going to get a lot of coverage as far as coming to that. But then also it's going to help with Jackson State because you're getting that coverage from the XFL. So it's a mutualistic relationship. It's been a while since I was in high school science, but I think I got the concept of mutualism correct. Y'all let me know in the, in the comment section if I didn't get that right. But I think that mutualism is a is a mutually beneficial parasitic relationship. I, look, I, it's been a while. I try to do it, okay? I was a salutatorian out there at TSU, but I didn't take too many science classes. That just that wasn't me. I was a communication guy. That's why I'm here with you today. But that was high school science. I think that's mutualism. Y'all let me know. I'll look it up, but y'all let me know anyway. And then another thing that I think that they really have going for them is the fact that they're in the States. And right now in the States, there is no viable secondary football option. And I think that it's going to take years upon years upon years probably for them to get to the CFL level. But I do think that they can rival the CFL for some talent. They prove themselves 
to have some stability and actually be a good option because like i said there is no viable second second option for people for people who want to play football professionally in the league i mean in the states it just isn't there's not one that you're like oh okay i i can understand i didn't make it to the league i didn't make it to the nfl but i can play in the xfl the usf usfl also kind of fills that void but we're talking about the xfl right now so that's those are some of the things that they have looking up for them something else that i want because i want to talk about what i want i want to see the best players from hbcus get the shot that's what it's meant for. That's clear. That's going to happen. I wouldn't mind seeing some juniors who maybe want to forego their last season of eligibility in the league and say, or in, the, in college and say, I want to try to play professionally. We seen, um, I think was it Keith Washington? It was some defensive back from West Virginia that ended up playing in one of these spring leagues and got to the NFL. I believe he ended up playing for the Carolina Panthers. So it completely is possible. It's completely possible. And, you know, I just want to forego my senior year in college. Now that was before the NIL and everything. So maybe it's a little bit different because a lot of that is for monetary value, but maybe you decide to do it. I think that would be cool. Now, the number one thing that I really want is I want to see these coaches get a chance. I see that at a lot of these pro days, you see the college coaches running the drills. You see college coaches, you know, networking. And I think that is perfect. You see the the, the minority fellowship. And we're going to talk about that at the end of the, the uh, episode, a little bit of a teaser. But you see that minority fellowship, it works. Or we're not going to talk about that, excuse me. Well, we're going to talk about going from collegiate ranks to maybe being in the pros. But you see that it does work. It worked for the Senior Bowl up until the, the Denver Broncos. And I think that something similar can happen for the XFL as far as let these coaches operate some of these drills at this showcase. Let them show their ability to coach during this, this event. Could Dwayne Taylor maybe have that head coaching opportunity that Mo and I talked about and have it in the XFL? I don't know. You know, I know that all eight of the coaches have already been picked out, but maybe a year down the line, you say, oh, I like that Alabama a and offensive coordinator who's running these drills. Let's give him a chance. I think that these are the opportunities that I would love to see happening in the XFL showcase for both players and coaches because coaching is just as important as players because players need to develop, and they're not just simply developing on their own. These coaches play a big part in that, and that's why I would love to see some of these XFL coaches come from the HBCU ranks, whether that's head coaches, assistant coaches, coordinators, whatever it is, I just want to see some more black faces coaching on somebody's coaching staff. I do, because you you understand there's a race issue in the NFL. That same thing goes for HBCU players, and co or HBCU players and coaches. But it's the idea that a lot of coaches, who a lot of black coaches aren't smart enough you know, little rhetoric and narratives that they spend, not good leaders, inadequate and whatever facet that you want to talk about, those same issues and those same narratives apply to how people view and talk about HBCU uh, coaches, because a lot of those coaches are black coaches. So they run into very similar issues. I would love to see some of that, you know, not exist in the XFL. Now, going forward, we're going to switch gears. We're going to go to the track. We're going to talk about the track and field in the SWAC, specifically the ladies, because there's a changing of the guard. And Prairie View A&M is the new team to beat in SWAC women's track and field. But before I tell you about that, I want to tell you about Built Bar, because Built Bar is the best protein bar on the market, bar none. And listen, I've had a lot of protein bars. I'm not going to name any because that would be free promotion, but I've had a lot in my years of life. Never have I tasted one that I've been as satisfied with as I was when I bit into Built Bar. And, and listen, my favorite thing is the multitude of flavors that they have. There's a lot of things to like about Built Bar, but my favorite is the multitude of flavors that they're going to have at your disposal because it does not matter. You cannot tell me that there is not at least a couple of flavors on that website that you're going to like and going to want to try. Y'all know my personal favorite. I don't have to tell you if you're a long-time listener, then you know which one it is. And if you're not, listen, I hope that you're here again. You'll hear me talk about my favorite flavor. Tell me what your favorite flavor is. Go try it out. They're all going to have 17 grams of protein, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and try P. Diddy's favorite Built Bar, the Built Puff. Yes, this is the, this is the type of things that I'm making a band. He sent you across the city. 
to try to go find. Go find me that built puff, man. I need that. Go give me that from the Bronx. I guarantee you, this is something that you are going to want to taste. And to find it, you go to built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15 if you want to save a little bit of money and get 15% off your offer. As we keep on rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, thank you for making us your first listen of the day every day. I do appreciate it. And make sure that you're checking out Locked on NBA Big Board with our guy, Rafael Barlow from the NBA Draft Junkies podcast and author of NBA Big Board newsletter. He's joined by Richard Stamen, Sam Ferris, and Leif Thulin, giving fans an in-depth look into the NBA draft, mock drafts, and player rankings of course you know you got to have big boards it's in the name right so make sure that you're checking that out in today's word of the day is none other than conclave meaning a general gathering right it can mean a private meeting a secret assembly but we used it in the first segment talking about the showcase and we meant a general gathering so now i want to talk to you about the swack in women's track and field because the undisputed dominance of Alabama State, that's over. That's done. And I was going to say that the change of the guard is growing nearer by the day, but the truth of the matter is it's here. It's here. Not only is the is the dominance of Alabama State a thing of the past, the new team to beat in SWAT track and field on the women's side is Prairie View a and It's just, look, I was hesitant to come in and say it. I genuinely was because I didn't want to write off Alabama State after everything that they have done for a decade. You heard me right. Yes, a decade. But when you look at it, there are two big time events in the SWAC track and field every single year. That's indoors and outdoors. Those, both of those are championships. So those are the two big events. Over the last two years, the, the Prairie View a and women have won three out of the four. Just to put it in perspective, they won three out of the last four. Before that, the previous 22, that's 11 years, went to Alabama State. That's a dominant run. That's over. That is over. And now PV, after basically basically being the best women's track and field team for two years in a row, I think that it is safe to say they are the team to beat. And I don't think that means that Alabama State can't do it. I don't think that means that fam, you can't do it. You name a school, Texas Southern doesn't mean that they can't do it. All I'm saying is they aiming at the top. Everybody's aiming at the top. If you're not at the top, you aiming at the top. And for years, it was Alabama State. Now, it's Prairie View A&M. And when I think about the ascension of the Panthers in this, it makes me think about a quote from Predator, and it was Arnold Schwarzenegger, and he said, it bleeds, if it bleeds, we can kill it. It's just that simple. And what it really means is you've shown this vulnerability. You can be hurt. You can be wounded. And if you can be wounded, you can die. Now, I know that sounds very fatal and like, gosh, why are we talking about it in terms of killing, you know, like this beast or whatever. But that's what Alabama State was. A dominance of 22 straight championships to me feels mythical. It almost feels not real. So when I say if it bleeds, we can kill it, I mean that. And that's kind of the mindset of at least me from the outside looking in that I would assume Prairie View took. See, when they won the first one and I was indoors, it's like, oh, we can knock them off. I'm sure you always felt it internally, but the proof is in the pudding. And now you look at it, it's like, oh, okay, I can actually beat this team. All right, cool. They didn't win outdoors. So, you know, Alabama State probably coming into 2022 feeling confident. Like, okay, Prairie View got indoors, but we got outdoors. That was just that was just luck. We still that squad. So now you come into 2022 and Prairie View wins indoors again. And now I come on here and I'm talking about, hey, we're looking at a situation where Prairie View – one indoors by a larger margin in 22 than they did in 21. They could get outdoors. And if they get outdoors, we're having a whole different conversation. Well, let's fast forward now and let's come to the present. They won outdoors. We're having a completely different conversation. See that confidence that I say this with, it wasn't, it wasn't there before outdoors was finished. Prairie View is the team to be. You aiming at the top, 
and you were aiming at the hornet's nest, but now you're not aiming at the hornet's nest anymore. What you're aiming at is, I don't know where panthers live, so I'm sorry I couldn't complete that, that metaphor. Um, but you're aiming at wherever panthers live now. <laughs> and I think that this move is going to have a trickle down effect in the sense that you would think that when the top team loses, and that's Alabama State, that those teams at the top, you know, a couple of competitive teams will kind of have a field day, start looking at chops like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready now. It's time for me to ascend. But I think that even the teams at the bottom could have that same confidence put down because once it feels like – I feel that with Alabama State being taken out, it's a collective weight lifted off of everybody's shoulders. Now, you're going to have to deal with Prairie View. Prairie View isn't just going to come around and start losing all of a sudden. I think that they're really going to build up some really good talent as far as or build up a pretty good run and you know start doing making noise in the swag it's it's not just going to be okay prairie view won three out of the last four championships now it's everybody's turn but i think that there are going to be more people who feel like they can accomplish it and for me that's good enough honestly that that's perfectly fine with me and recruiting may show that as well where people feel like they don't only have to go to alabama state in order to win swag it's a win-win to me. It is a win-win. And going forward, as we're wrapping up the show, we're going to be talking about Virginia State because they just hired their new head football coach, a guy who is far from unfamiliar with HBCU coaching. But first, I want to tell you about Rock Auto because if you really need something known with your car, I suggest that you go to Rock Auto because I'm a family guy. I love family businesses. And if that doesn't appeal to you, that's fine. They have things that I know are gonna that's gonna get you. You don't have to leave the house. You can stay in the comfort of your home. You can stay in your own bubble. No more people badgering or telling you that, hey, you have to get this particular part. That's the only one we have. And it's like, why is it this much? You never have to question that. Because at Rock Auto, these place, these prices are gonna be 30, 50, 70 percent cheaper than what you would get them at your local auto auto parts store. It's cheaper. You get the comfort of staying in your own house. And for me, it's a family business and something that I per on a personal level that I like. Rock Auto is easily the best place for me. It makes the most sense. So go to rockauto.com and put locked on in the how did you hear about us section. As we're wrapping up today's episode of Locked On HBCU, I want to talk about Virginia State finding their new head football coach. And it's ironic because earlier in the show, we were just discussing how HBCU coaches could go from coaching the HBCU ranks and possibly coaching in the XFL ranks next. And ironic, that's that's the reason that Virginia State doesn't have a coach. I almost confused it with Tyrone Wheatley from Morgan State, but Reggie Barlow from Virginia State. See, Wheatley went to the Broncos as a part of the Senior Bowl Fellowship, but Wheatley, or excuse me, almost did it again. Barlow is now in the XFL. So who are they getting to be his replacement? Henry Frazier the third, not the first, not the second, not the fourth, the son either. And I, I love when they continue the bloodline with the same name and it's like first, second, third, and fourth. I know who your daddy is. I do. Oh, your, your daddy, Henry Frazier. I ain't even got a question about it, right? I really, I love it. I love it, man. It, and if for some reason, when it gets to like the fourth and the fifth, see, first, second, that might be a junior. You know, first, I ain't got no number on it. Second, that's a junior. The third, that's cool, too. But when it gets to the IV and then the V, I'm like, oh, man, this this almost feels regal. You know, it feels like when the Royals get to name and they 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 uh the kids the same. And XY. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent. The point is, Henry Frazier is the new head coach for Virginia State. And he's not a guy who is new to the HBCU landscape. He's not even new to being an HBCU head coach. He's coached at Bowie State. He's coached at Prairie View. And he's coached at North Carolina Central. Now, he's also been an assistant, but those are the places that he's been a head coach at. And unfortunately for him, and unfortunately for the lady involved in this, due to some domestic uh, disputes and violating a, a protective order, he ended up getting fired from North Carolina Central. This was 10 years ago, right? And he hasn't had a head coaching job since. So this is his first head coaching job since 2011. And it's been 10 years, so I would hope that North Carolina, or excuse me, I would hope that Virginia State has done their due diligence and understood and tried to find out what has Frazier been doing in the time in between, because these are these are serious charges. These aren't just light charges. Um, so that's what I would hope they have done. But when you look at 
when what he's done in the meantime that we know about professionally, he was kind of not ghost, but from the collegiate landscape, he wasn't doing anything until he went back to Bowie State as an assistant. And he's been there since, I think, 2017, right around there. He's been around Bowie State since then. But 2011 to 2017, he was on the high school ranks. He just was not doing as much till he got to the collegiate ranks. And now he's back as a head coach. And if you wanted a reason to be excited, say you're a Virginia State fan, right? And you're like, man, I want to know what my, what my team going to do this year. What should I expect out of this guy? I got, a, I got a really good reason to be excited. And that's the fact that success follows him everywhere that he goes see he was at North Carolina Central for two years and in that second year he led them to their first division one winning season it was a six and five season and it was the best record that they had had since joining the division one ranks four years prior and then you look at Prairie View or no I want to I want to end with Prairie View because that's the best one we look at Bowie State because that's the D2 rank right the, D, the Bowie State and at Bowie State he had 26 victories he had a winning season every single year. You didn't have to worry about him coming through and, and just losing. That wasn't something that you had to truly be concerned about. And he led them to back-to-back CIAA uh, championship appearances. So this is a guy who has been very successful. Now, his crown jewel is Prairie View, and I think that that's key because his crown, his crown jewel could have been Bowie State, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But if his crown jewel was Bowie State, and you look at, okay, he did it on D2 level, even though Virginia State is still D2, he did it uh, on a D2 level as opposed to a D1 level. You're like, okay, maybe. But he did it at the D1 level. On the FCS level, he had his best performance. And that shows me that even when the competition is very high, this isn't somebody who is going to wilter. He is a guy who's going to be completely prepared and even elevate the team. He's going to ask for more. I appreciate a coach like that, and I'm excited for that aspect of it. Now, in addition to having his, or his crown jewel was, in 2009, he led them to the SWAC championship. He was the FCS Eddie Robinson Coach of the Year, which means he was the best coach in all of FCS football, not just HBCU ball. I understand that it has Eddie Robinson in the name, but that means he was the best coach in all of FCS ball. And that team was inducted into the Prairie View Hall of Fame along with himself. That's his crown jewel, and that's, that right there is a coach that you're getting. You're getting a former FCS coach of the year to coach for you at Virginia State. That's something that I feel like you should be excited about, including being excited about Locked on HBCU every day, Monday through Friday. That's the reason you make it your first listen of the day every day. In tomorrow's episode, the reason I didn't want to disrespect with Bowie, I'm, I'm going to look at the conversation of should we put should we be putting Bowie State in the same conversation as any D1 FCS hbcu football team i got some i got some feelings about that i just want to know i got questions and i'm going to present to you the questions and i will allow you to answer it i'm excited because i've been talking to myself about this for a while and if i'm going to talk to myself about it let's at least talk to you about it as well now for your second listen of the day make sure that you're checking out any of our locked on conference shows sec acc big 12 pac 12 does not matter get yourself educated on a lot of us have secondary teams, maybe the biggest school in our in our state. Get yourself educated on them as well. And in the meantime, in between time, you can find me on Twitter at South Exclusives. And so the next time that we hear each other, family, take care. Stay blessed. Peace.